right, so what we got here? Honda. I think it's a 600 cc. So, all right, guys, we got ourselves a 2001 VLX Honda Shadow. So, so this old girl's pouring gas out. Okay, I haven't really started in on this, but customers said customer states there's this gas pouring out around the carburetor so first thing i'm, I'm going to do we're going to get the air box off so we can see in there a little better and uh see what's going on okay those are usually just about finger tight it's just a little cover other things going on with this bike i mean the master cylinder is leaking and whatnot so, it appears to have a four millimeter Allen. So it doesn't, get, it doesn't get ridden all that much. That's the problem. So that you leave these things sits, especially a carbureted bike, you start getting problems. There's the air filter, it looks okay. I'm gonna turn the gas on to see if it starts running out. <laughs> Nothing yet, so let's start this up. Let's see if we can duplicate what this customer's saying. Neutral, run. Hmm. Oh, there it comes. Yeah, he wasn't lying. Holy sh... Yep, it's pouring out of there. Oh, oh, my new lift. Ain't happening. Oh yeah, that gas smells turned for sure. I guess once this starts. Just let me take a look at this again. I couldn't really see where that's coming from. Oh my goodness, it's coming right out the overflow. Yeah, probably the needle's stuck or something. Yeah, looks like it's coming out right of this hose here. Yep. All right, so. We ain't gonna start this anymore. Pull the tank, I do believe. Um, because there's a screw right here, of course. The tank's in the way. Um, this makes it a, little, a lot more easier. And, and honestly, this tank's probably gonna need flushed. So, all right, guys, let's get to it. We're gonna take it off the fuel pump and that way we'll just pull it up with the tank because this hose goes into the valve. <clears throat> so, okay. And with that, I think we're ready to pull the tank. Yeah, I mean, it definitely looks like there's moisture. So, once you get this out of the way, these are easy to get off. Okay, you're gonna have to unbolt them. Um, remember which one goes where, because one pulls and one pushes. So,
So this one goes on the back side with the one nut, and then the two nut is on this front side. So once that's out of the way, um, you gotta undo your choke cable here. Okay, you got this plastic nut. I'm not sure what size it is. You can pretty much do it by hand and just pulls right out of this bracket. Okay, and we're gonna pull it out with the carb. And then you got a coolant hose here. Okay, and it's gonna leak, so you're gonna wanna plug it off. So get ready to do that. And then there's another line, which is another coolant line. And then there's another coolant line, that one right there. So you got one coming in and then one going out. That's where I'm pop them off. And I'm just shoving spark plugs in these holes. Trying to help everything through here. And your idle cable. gotta undo this on the other side just slips out of the bracket all right guys let's open this old boy up you see the water in there your ethanol of course it is Go up there and things should come off That's what it looks like. We're gonna need a new bowl gasket for sure. That's not looking too good. And there's your accelerator pump. You see that? That old hole right there? Watch. So that's working. Oh yeah. Alright. Doesn't look too bad in there, I'm surprised. That'd be a lot worse. So we'll need that gasket there. No problem. Hmm. All right, so let's see here. I'll blow into this. Hmm. That's weird. So it's coming out this dump tube right here. Hmm. Get away. <clears throat> Needle tip looks good. Hmm. All right, so I got it all stripped down put away. So there's a screen on your inlet fuel fitting here, this screen right here, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in behind there. Find it be hard for you guys to see it. You see all that white crusty stuff? So that may be our culprit. Um, the seat looks okay. I'm on pressure test and everything. The needle, the needle valve has a ring around it. So we may, so we may replace that. Got a little ring around it, but it is holding pressure. <clears throat> um, the bowl gasket, of course, is all ate up from ethanol fuel. Um, we really don't need that many parts, you know, all these diaphragm good there, diaphragm good here for the choke. I do believe that's the choke circuit. Um, and then your accelerator pump, that's also fine. So, um, of course we took all the jets out. You do have a nozzle, okay? And you can put it in backwards. Um, let me see here. So this side goes in first. That side goes in the throat of the carburetor. 
night guys so here we are a couple days later um we got our parts in so this is the hose from the fuel pump to the tank hose this is that hose i had to pretty much cut off because um, it was the wrong hose to begin with um good thing honda good thing honda still makes this hose there's your number what you're looking for and i source all my parts from parkzilla you know they're out of georgia is one of their facilities and they're quick and they got their uh shit together so um, and also here's our uh, gasket set which just comes with the bowl gasket um the drain o-ring and then the little o-ring for your um mixture your mixed mixture screw okay um and honestly you want to pinch yourself a diagram because someone was in this and they had they had the washer on the wrong side on this so instead of it being uh, the o-ring then the washer they had the washer then the o-ring so I don't, that was probably causing a, a problem but it didn't cause the problem now the main issue was i i, I believe the needle was hanging open for whatever reason um because inside this carburetor really doesn't look all that bad um besides this dirt in behind in behind uh your inlet fitting here so i'm gonna get that cleaned out it's fine but i'm just gonna polish it real quick Just with a q-tip and some um you can use some palmas from like a hand cleaner but i got some valve grinding compound just a little bit of this just to shine her up make sure everything's smooth all kinds of holes in there hmm you guys probably can't see that well I've never noticed that but if you look you see these little these three little like relief cut out release if you look there's a corresponding hole on each one that's right Yeah, it's gonna be too hard. These GoPros don't focus for the shit. Right, so we got the seat all polished up. Yeah, them holes go right down into there. So I wanted to really pay attention to the idle circuit. So the idle circuit starts right here okay so it comes in let's see you got these two air jets right here right essentially it comes through here okay and then there's a little check valve in here one-way check valve that opens and then it sends air down and through this passageway and goes all the way here right into your pilot jet and then it, then it travels through here you know fuel comes up through here this injects air in, into it all right and sends it this way and then of course you got your uh what do they call that your pilot screw i have to see what, what they call it but the your adjustment here they call that the slow jet a lot of people call it the pilot jet which is the same thing but that's this guy right here so that's your slow jet so that's responsible for fuel at idle and i do believe partial throttle and then once you go wide open the main jet kicks in so so really these holes on the side 
is what matters. Because if I look down in there, it just bottoms out. It just bottoms out against the body in there. So I've looked at it and looked at it. Thought maybe there's a plug, but if you think about it, there's nowhere in here for it to even come up through. Maybe it stops before it bottoms, but the thing is, I can see marks. You know, you can see the marks in there where it bottoms out. The way this circuit works, of course, your pilot screw here, right, goes into there. So fuel that idle and partial throttle comes up through the here, right, and then air is injected through here, and then it mixes, right, and then it goes through this channel right here. All right, and on that channel, you got your mixture screw. But before that, like this plug right here, and behind this plug, is these four little... Is these four little screw holes right here. Okay, this is where the fuel's coming up. Hole right here, right? You spraying through this hole and you can watch it of course come out through here where your pilot screw goes in and then you can watch it come out these four holes so that's what you do you're going to start from this circuit here and blow all the way through and if it's making its way of course out through this hole here and these four and that one then you know it's clear make sure this is clear from here from this little check valve through this little hole which is pretty simple uh, shot there. All right, so I'm gonna get it back together. See what we got. Right, so another thing is Is that this thing has exhaust aftermarket exhaust on it, so we need to shim the needle on this There's This in there it wasn't really I don't know if it's working, but this It's a mill point two five I'm gonna put two of these that's sixty nine so probably a little, about a mil about a millimeter so we'll we'll see how that goes um you know and the washer itself needs to be about two and a half. You gotta know, so if you don't want to get a kit. So you install them on the needle. Start it in. Make sure it's seated in there. Everything looks good. Make sure your spring's on. And then you're gonna lock this in. It's like a quarter turn. So that is supposed to sit down on top of the needle, keep it straightened. All right, and then get you a 5 16 or an eight millimeter. Let's see which way I gotta go here. It's in to locks under these three little tabs, one there and then one down there. Yeah, double check that. And this end goes on the fuel pump, this fat end. So it goes just like this. Let me see if I'm fun. Good point for that. Some of you guys don't like these kind of clamps, but they're the OEM and they're the OEM for a reason. The garage. 
about 105. Anyways. Alright, so remember, you got a lot of things to pay attention to putting this car back on. Um, you got your two coolant lines, right? This one is one goes through the side. Right, it goes through the side. And this is one that comes underneath your two cables for your throttle. Um, and then you gotta route your choke cable through here, and then your um, throttle cable or, or your idle adjustment cable through here. Um, so for the idle adjustment, you're going to go to the right side of this hose because that's the side the bracket's on. And your choke cable, you're actually going to go right through that hole right there. So you're going to go right through here and go right in there. So this is time to make sure you don't got any paper towels left in there. So and this boot here is questionable looking at it. So I don't like that. Hmm. Get it back on there. All right, so we got everything back into place and routed correctly. Right there. So I think we're at a good place to where we can put the fuel tank back on. Make sure everything's routed right. Make sure everything looks good. Right, so we're gonna turn that to on. We're gonna crank this thing and see what happens. Get this paper out of here. I'll probably take a minute. Here. Yep, we got fuel already. thing purrs like a kid. Oh man, that old 600 cc boy. Freaking awesome man, awesome. That's when, it, that's when all the headaches become worth it right there. You start it up and it sounds good, so. Okay, so we're on warm enough for 10 minutes or whenever it gets up to operating temperature. Um, we're gonna start the engine and we're gonna adjust the idle speed with the throttle stop knob, which is just your, your throttle adjustment right here, your, your idle adjustment. Okay. And we're gonna adjust it to 1200. All right, so, and then turn the pilot screw in or out slowly to obtain the highest engine speed. Okay. And then we're gonna readjust the idle speed with the throttle stop again to 1200. And then we're gonna turn the pilot screw until the engine speed drops 50 RPM. Okay, yeah, so. 
so once we so once we drop it 50 rpms what however that is how, how many turns or half a turn quarter of a turn then we're going to turn it another three quarters out okay and then from there we need to adjust the idle so that's your procedure and they get this thing tuned in pretty simple um the thing is on these bikes there is no tachometer there's just a odometer and a speedometer but there's nothing to tell you the rpm so that's the tricky part i must start putting this stuff back together like i said i had to take the fuse box out pull some fuses while i was trying to get this thing running that way that i can unplug the headlight and stuff so it doesn't kill the battery um, but there's your battery if you guys want to know all the way tucked down in there and there's a cover and all kinds of shit in the way so all right let's get this old girl back together this apart i took it off here okay the gas tank was coming off so that's how i did it but you guys can take it off here which is a uh, five mil internal allen so you know, that sits in line there but to do our um our final adjustment here you gotta leave the air, bo the air box off anyway so No, that sounds good. So I'm just gonna leave it at three turns out. Get the seat back on, and everything bolted back down, and I take this old girl out and I lay some rubber. It's only 1100, so technically we can leave it here. But we're gonna take it up the pad.